Nerd Morning, everyone. My name is Jeremy, and this is the Nerd Morning Show, a show where we talk about comics, books, video games, cosplay, and other nerdy things. Um, today, I have a special guest with me, Mark Lurcher, who is a photographer and specializes in cosplay photography. So thank you so much for joining with us. Glad to be here. Um, so first off, let's get a little bit about you, um, tell us about your, I guess, your business and some of your experience with uh, photography, particularly with, with cosplay. So uh, I used to teach at uh, Apple and uh, started teaching people photography and mm -hmm. decided I wanted to uh, get back into photography because I had taken some classes and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and I was super excited when I first heard that uh, FanX was coming to Salt Lake City yeah. And so after two or three of those, uh, I applied to be a photographer there because my photography business was expanding. Uh -huh. And uh, I got um, uh, brought on and uh, they really liked my photography and uh, the rest is kind of history from there. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I think that the world of photography is really interesting. I do have some background to doing photography um, as a hobbyist. Um, and I'm always just really, really impressed by the craft. Um, and I think that cosplay is a really interesting way of uh, interacting with someone who is uh, a creative artist and someone else who is a creative artist. And the synergy is really, I think, in a an interesting element that's unique to cosplay photography. Um, for you, is there anything that you find unique or special about doing this type of photography beyond anything else? Well, cosplay has always been something that's been very interesting to me because um, people start out uh, loving something. They have their fandom and then they go, hey, I wonder if I could like dress up as that person. And uh, what I love about cosplay the most, besides, you know, uh, characters that I love uh, brought to life, um, is they find new and very exciting ways to create the cosplay. So mm -hmm. a lot of times people will uh, learn sewing because they were ne they've never sewed in their lives, but they learn sewing because they want to be able to sew uh, the costume together or they'll do 3D printing. Um, mm -hmm fabrication in all forms, uh, the using foam to create, you know, metallic armor and things like that. So that became very, uh, very interesting to me because I love creativity. Um, I've been a creative all my life, uh, did gra graphic design for a very long time. So photography was a nice segue into uh, being able to be part of the whole cosplay world. Yeah, uh, I like what you talked about with like learning a new skill, like sewing or something like that. Uh, I know like, for me, I watched the Arrow TV show when it came out on CW years ago and was like, oh, this is the coolest thing. And I was like, I want to make that costume. And so I learned how to sew. I remember working for three months plus to develop this costume, taking all the different pictures from all the screenshots I could find, um, getting like a tutor because I had no idea what I was doing, right? Um, mm -hmm. And there are a lot of different stories like that. And I'm I'm not really a cosplayer. I do dabble with it. It's part of like the dimension that I, I play with and enjoy, but there are some people who, you know, build a whole life out of this and a career out of this and the development of being passionate about a story or about a character and then uh, developing new skills outside of that is something I actually do talk a lot about. And I think that's an amazing aspect of being a nerd and just celebrating uh, some of these incredible elements and stories that we get inside of that culture. And, and the really cool thing is that cosplay doesn't even have to be about like creating anything if you don't want it to be right. It could be other, sure. there's all levels. And I love that about cosplay. You can be passionate about cosplay, but not have to be somebody who's creating something. But I, I love all ranges all the way from bought costumes and assembled pieces to to bring them out of cosplay all the way to people who build it from scratch, you know, yeah. but I don't care if, you know, people are, are doing that. It's, it's, yeah. I love the passion um, being poured into it and, and the love and, and, and the inclusion, uh, you mm -hmm. know, as, as long as, you know, there's always bad parts of any community, but for yeah. the most part, cosplay is very inclusive of everyone, despite, you know, despite who they may be, what they, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever their life situation is, everybody can be uh, passionate about cosplay. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, no gatekeeping here, right? Anyone can do it, no matter if you are doing just a little bit or doing a lot, anything in between and however you approach it, it's uh, valid. So yeah. that's a really good thing to know for sure. Um, for um, a lot of people who talk about cosplay and things like that, they often talk about the creators, which we definitely have discussed with that. Um, what's unique about the photography side of that experience? So, uh, you know, coming coming to it front as a nerd, a big comic book nerd, because uh -huh. you know, I'm a big Marvel fan for most of my life. Um, yeah. You know, being like seeped in that whole comic book culture, a, a lot of for me, uh, doing cosplay photos is is very much like creating a comic book cover, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. the, the covers are always the thing that, you know, it was the hook that was trying to get you to read that comic book. And so for me, every photo is like that. It's supposed to be a hook to yeah. get you to be interested in the cosplay or the fandom or whatever it is. So um, for me, it's, you know, about dramatic poses. So like hands really close to the camera, which mm -hmm. usually is a no-no for most photographers, but for cosplay and for comic books, that's very acceptable, right? Very yeah. dramatic poses where it, you- You parallel some of those type of dramatic elements that they have because uh, like all the big artists would talk about uh, how you don't have static poses. Everything is moving in a comic panel frame. And so uh, being able to parallel that inside of the craft, that's a really interesting thing. And seeing how that's different maybe than other type of model style photography is a, is a good note. That's interesting. Oh, definitely. And uh, another thing you can do is also uh, parallel uh, artwork that's been done for that character, right? So yeah. uh, it may be two of the comic book characters interacting in a way that the artist created, and then you try to recreate that in a photograph as well. So there's yeah. a lot of creative venues to go when you're mm -hmm. photographing cosplay that you wouldn't normally take in like senior photos or weddings or things like that. You don't yeah. generally try to get people to do dramatic poses. <laughs> <laughs> Which maybe is unfortunate. Maybe they just need to branch out. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they should. They should. Like a big, you know, like battle pose at the yeah. wedding. But. <laughs> oh, man. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I have been really impressed with your, like, social media presence and platform is obviously promoting and sharing about all of the different creatives that you've uh, interacted with and, and building that out as well, um, but also you have a big stance on uh, safety and protection for these uh, different creatives. I think this is really noteworthy because um, in indie, any industry, like, there can be um predators or dangers or things like that um but in some respects you know if you're a professional model you've got uh some training some know-how some education at this but all but when the cosplay community because it's so open because it's so accessible there are individuals who don't necessarily have that training or education to watch for warning signs or dangers for unsafe situations and so you tried to bring some light to that i think that's really interesting um one of the things you had was like 13 points i think um to avoid predator photographers um and uh, just kind of with, with that, what's, tell me a little bit about this. And I think it's a really powerful, good message. And there's some really interesting thoughts that you've shared here. Well, like I said, I, I started photography again by, I was teaching it and I was like, well, I need to be able to speak to it uh, as a photographer. You know, if I don't have a nice camera, then I can't really uh, speak intelligently about cameras. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I kind of came on the scene as uh, an interloper, I would say. I was a graphic mm -hmm. designer and a teacher becoming yeah. a photographer. Um, but I noticed in the in the industry, more especially cosplay, um, that there were, were a lot of people who did predatory things where they would try to get people, uh, they would, they use uh, photography as, as a dating app or a, mm -hmm. uh, or, a, or an excuse to be able to uh, touch people, you know, in, in inappropriate ways, yeah. or even go as far as sexually assault people. So, uh, and, and it's not just Utah that has a problem. I think it, 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 as an industry as a whole, mm -hmm. there's a huge problem with that. Yeah. So that became very concerning to me because uh, I'm a victim of sexual abuse. So of course that affected me and it, it made me hate the industry, but instead of like, 
leaving the industry, I, I, you know, I feel like education coming from a, a place at Apple where I was teaching people day, day mm -hmm. in, day out. Uh, if I can teach people to look for the signs of a predator, then they can educate themselves and they can try to uh, uh, stop those people because they're, they're destroying, you know, uh, cosplay. They, you know, they'll, they'll destroy everything. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, these 13 tips that I've got, which I'll be expand, I'll be uh, changing a little bit because um, as I posted these and they became popular, uh, people that have been through this with photographers have mm. even given uh, more tips and uh, better ways to uh, you know watch out for those photographers. Yeah. Uh, I mean, perhaps we can go through some of the uh, the points. Yeah. Um, yeah. What would you say are some of the the biggest ones um, for you or um, some things like that? I know, like some of the things that I thought was like interesting. You know, never never go alone. Um, uh, I it's uh, I think an added burden to a cosplayer to be required to bring a friend, um, but it also is a really smart idea. And when you go to like, I've, I've worked um, in different uh, film studios and things like that. You have someone who does your hair, who have someone who does your makeup. You have multiple individuals who are there and then you've got someone who's uh, working with the lighting and someone who actually is like working with the camera. You've got like a whole crew. And um, on a photography set situation with like with cosplay, it's um, very, stripped down because uh, it's not a big industry production. And so having a buddy makes physical, like logical sense that way, just because it does take more hands. Um, and it also makes it so you are in a safe situation because you have a buddy, you have someone who you can feel comfortable touching you whenever you need a hair fixed or things like that. Like I saw that and I was like, this makes a lot of sense. It does add an additional burden to it, the cosplayer again, because you do have to be able to drag a friend along. Um, but it's a good tip. And I thought that was a good thing to note. Um, what are ones that maybe you feel like this is a one right here or, or something oh, like sure. that? Oh, uh, sure. Never go alone. I mean, just like you said, I think it's probably the biggest one. It helps. Uh, it goes to everything that can go wrong in a, a, a photo shoot because if a photographer says they're going to have an assistant there and then the assistant is not there you're mm -hmm. kind of in a bind right so yeah if you bring somebody with you that's either a friend a partner uh, 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 somebody that has your best interest interest in mind yeah then you don't have to worry about um being in the moment right the photographer may may you know uh may bring something up that they want to do and you don't mm -hmm. want to actually do it but because you want to you know because if you're alone then you feel like almost obligated to do whatever the photographer yeah. wants. but yeah uh, you have somebody else there that has your best interest interest and is also watching the photographer the whole time mm -hmm. uh they can see that maybe they're doing something that's also inappropriate and that can lead to yeah you know, bad things happening i would say that's one of the huge ones um Another one I would say is make sure that you share your values, what you want out of the photo shoot mm -hmm. with the photographer beforehand so that they're not springing things on you. Mm -hmm. that. So yeah. uh, what a lot of them will do is a bait and switch tactic, which is, hey, I'll do some headshots for you. Let's do some free, you know, free photos for you. Mm -hmm. And then they'll go, hey, uh, I have this other model and they're getting nude and they're, we're doing all this stuff. Uh, do you want to do that too? And, and, uh, you know, if it's it pushes you like to that, something. yeah, it pushes yeah. you into something you don't want to do. Um, it also makes sure that you and the photographer are on the same wavelength as well, because if you're expecting to get nudes out of a photo shoot and the photographer doesn't want to do nudes, then that could be a, you know, that could be a big problem. So sure. you just make sure that you share what you expect out of the photo, photo shoot before the photo shoot actually happens. Yeah. And then it's clear between you and the photographer what, what's going to happen. And he mm. can't, if he's a predator, he'll try to spring something on you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And in fact, there's, uh, this is, this is an addition. I think it's very important. It was brought up uh, on Instagram by somebody, uh, but there's two kinds of photographers. There's the short-term uh, predator and the long-term predator. They mm. both use uh, tactics that are similar, but are looking for either, you know, a short-term gain or a long-term gain. Uh, the short term will say, uh, I'm going to give you free headshots. He'll, he'll offer a gift and then mm -hmm. spring uh, 
you know, he'll spring nudes on you almost immediately. Mm -hmm. Whereas the long term will actually insert himself into your friend circle. Mm -hmm. He's much more insidious. He'll, uh, you know, he basically uses his reputation among your circle of friends and makes himself the good guy. Mm -hmm. And then when, if something, if he does something during the photo shoot that's inappropriate, then he uses that as a wedge against you and your friends mm -hmm. and the community to say that he's the good guy and you're the bad guy. <clears throat> so you know that, that that's a huge thing that that's one of the changes i'm making to the 13 points that i've yeah that's that's an interesting <clears throat> dynamic and and very scary um i can see how that could affect the community at large and one of the powerful cool things um about like you know being a nerd and being able to celebrate these types of things in, in this type of a way is that you do have a community um and um I, there are individuals that i not like best friends with or anything but I go to a convention and I run into and I'm like I'm so excited to you know to see you you know give me your life update what's new um you know I've you know you got new cool work that's awesome to see you know great to see you I'll be excited to see you again in a future time you know if there's it's not like a best friend experience right but it's this camaraderie of celebrating um this type of uh stuff and being able to uh, share in that with other people is a cool, powerful thing. And um, these type of individuals who prey on that um, is it's tragic, not only because it's harmful to that individual, which is a huge, huge deal, um, but also it's just damaging to the community at large, which is also a sad thing. Yeah, I think I think it really could destroy the community. I mean, but mm -hmm. but I mean, modeling i think modeling and photography which is you know before there was cosplay of course there was yeah. modeling and photography. i think uh, predators have been in that world of photography for a very long time so yes yes this doesn't only apply to uh, cosplay it, it definitely applies to anyone who's thinking of becoming a model or mm -hmm. being in photography you have to watch out for those people and make sure they're not preying on the yeah. community that you want to protect that you love so much and, and i think that's something that like i said earlier uh, uh people are very impassioned about you know mm -hmm. their their fandoms and the things they love in their life and if somebody's a predator they're gonna they can destroy all of that right yeah. they can destroy your passion for life your passion for fandom uh passion for creativity all of those things can be squashed by predators and so yeah. uh, that's definitely something I want to get rid of and educate people about. Uh, look for behaviors. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's just a good thing to to know. It's it's unfortunate that that it's it's on the cosplayer some, somewhat to do uh -huh. this. Thing. But you know, being safe isn't just an individual thing. It's a, mm -hmm. it's 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 a community thing. So if we have a community, let's be a community and help each other and yeah, and help each other be safe. Um, and, and even though it makes photographers, you know, it, it puts photographers in an awkward spot, if you're not a predator, that's kind of, you know, that's the price of admission. You have to make sure your models are safe. That should be the, like, the most important thing that you do. Totally. Uh, I, I like, I like how you talked about, like, this is, you know, how to avoid uh, predator photographers, which is kind of targeted more towards cosplayers. I'd love to be able to see another one sometime in the future where it's like, how to not be a predator photographer you know like there's certain things that when i started learning about photography worked in you know the film industry for a time and doing things like that where they're like there are times when event like you may actually have to touch the subject and there are things that you do you ask permission if you have to touch you know them you're going to be using maybe your backside of your hand um or you're saying i'm going i need to be able to fix this piece of hair is that a right that i do that you ask permission and you do those types of things. And, and is that a foolproof system or situation? No, not at all. Um, but there are certain things that photographers who may not necessarily be predators, but may not necessarily know, here are the ways that you should be interacting with a subject. Um, and if you're in photographing an individual, these are the ways you can approach and interact with them appropriately. I think there's a similar thing with fans a photographer at conventions, right? You don't go up and just put your arm around somebody. You don't just take pictures of them without their permission. Um, yes, it is technically an open space, um, but still these are people and there are 
uh, ways you can be respectful to them and to make sure they feel comfortable, they feel safe, and that you are feeling comfortable and that you feel safe. And that goes around and um, it takes the community to protect the community, to make it so it's a good place for everyone to be a part of. That's right. If you want to be a professional in almost any industry, there are certain standards that you have to live by mm -hmm. to say that I'm a professional, whatever it is. Yeah. Right? Uh, more especially photography definitely needs that. And I do, I do have actually another list. It's uh -huh. I have another list of how photographers can respect their models more because you Love know, it. definitely there are photographers that have big heads and maybe rightfully so, but uh, it doesn't mean that they have to treat their models like crap. Um, no, so yeah, that's I've, never I've okay. made another list. So <laughs> I'm big on lists, you know, I have a big list of things they can do to make sure that they're helping their model uh, do the best they can without you being unprofessional. You know, mm. there's, there's no reason to be unprofessional to anyone. Yeah. Uh, especially if you're trying to run a business, right? So yeah, that, that just sounds like bad logic, right? Mm -hmm. Oh man. Well, thank you so much for this discussion. I think that uh, cosplay photography is an amazing art form and something that sometimes is like overlooked. You look at an amazing cosplay and it's this image, right? And you're like, that's so cool. That's so amazing. And obviously like credit to the um, cosplayer for doing whatever it was, whether it was creating it or buying it, you know, putting it on, doing all that stuff. But then there's a huge, huge um, element as well with the photographers as well. So getting kind of like a behind the scenes conversation and look with you was super interesting. Um, so thank you very much. You're welcome. Glad to be here. Um, you guys can all find more Nerd Morning content um, at Nerd Morning in places like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitch, and more. Um, so go check out all those places. Um, for you, Mark, where is an easy place that they can find you? On Instagram, it's at M, like as in Mark. Uh, and then Lurcher, my last name is a little hard to spell, but it's L-O-E-R-T-S-C-H-E-R. -E and then on Facebook, uh, if you look up Mark Lurcher, uh, you'll find me. I usually do most of my photography through the personal profile because the business profiles are very, very restricted. <laughs> Good deal. Perfect. Well, thank you again so much. And we'll catch you guys all next time.